Introduction, the IBM Advance 36. The IBM Advance 36 was a mid-range computer, introduced in 1994. It was designed to provide System 36 users a more advanced processing platform at a smaller price and footprint than the larger AS400 computer of 1988. On June 21, 1988, IBM introduced the application System 400, known as the AS400. A high-performance, integrated server for complex business applications. It also provided an upgrade path for the IBM System 36, which had been introduced in 1983, and the earlier System 38, which IBM had introduced back in 1978. According to Computer World Magazine's October 31, 1994 issue, the Advanced 36 was built around a prototype version of the 64-bit Power PC microprocessor, and was the first system to implement IBM's object-oriented microcode. The entry-level system was priced at a low $12,000, or about $25,000 today, and was available in three different configurations. The AS400 family in its various forms has greatly evolved over time, and although the original hardware is no longer produced, many systems are still in use by companies and organizations around the world. The following original 1994 IBM video was given to new customers of the Advanced 36, to guide them through the unboxing, setup, and implementation of the system into their existing System 36 environment. Now nearly 30 years old, the presentation style is a bit slow and methodical, but it contains excellent detail. It is provided here in its entirety, for educational and historical purposes. Run time about 46 minutes. Congratulations on purchasing your new AS400 Advanced 36. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Now that you have your system, I'm sure you'll want to get it installed and get it up and running. This video will assist you in installing your system, uh, performing your first IPL, and moving your data from your System 36 to your Advanced 36. During this video, we will cover unpacking the system, identifying key components that are part of your system, installing the system and performing your first IPL, installing the transition aid on your old System 36. We'll talk about the transition data link, which is a device that is used to move data from your System 36 to your advanced 36 through a TwinX connection. We will install that, that transition aid on your system. Then we'll use the transition aid to move data from your System 36 to your advanced 36. And finally, we'll wrap it up with some things that you'll have to do after you've installed your system. Your Advanced 36 will come packaged in two or more boxes. The first box will be a system unit. That's where your 9402 Model 236 is packaged. Along with that, there will be one or more boxes that contain the accessories that go along with your system unit. In this case, it was all packaged in one box. The standard equipment that comes with your 9402 Model 236 is a set of manuals, of which one of those manuals you will be using during your installation. That is the 9402 Model 236 install guide. Along with that will be an bo accessory box. In that box, there is a set of diskettes that contain the transition aid that will have to be installed on your System 36. There are other information that you will want to read prior to installing your system in that box. Also packaged in this box is a Read Me First document that you should read before starting your, your installation of your system. Also in that box is a packing slip that you will take and go through this packing slip along with your order and all the parts that come with your Advanced System 36 to ensure you have everything. If there is something you don't have, just contact your service representative prior to starting the installation. Packaged in this box, which is standard equipment for your Advanced System 30, Advanced 36, is an eight-port workstation attachment feature, a two-port communications line attachment, two communications cables that attach to the two-port uh, attachment, a twin X cable that is used to connect your system console to your advanced system 36. Then along with that you can optionally order 
a five and a quarter inch diskette. Coming along with that five and a quarter inch diskette is a power supply, a power cord, and an attachment cable that attaches the five and a quarter inch diskette to your, pro to your system unit. You can also optionally order a transition data link, which is the box I spoke of earlier that is used to move data from your system 36 to your advanced 36. There is a, a box in here called the transition data link. Along with that is a three port twin X adapter cable and a power supply cable. Later in the video we'll discuss how to install this as well as the uh, five and a quarter inch diskette drive. Now the next thing is a set of manuals that you would have received under separate cover or separate shipment when your system arrived. The first one of these being operating your computer 9402 model 236. You will use this in using the transition uh, aid. The second one is performing your first configuration on your 9402 model 236. Within the installation guide, it'll refer to this manual, so you want to keep this one handy. Also, you will receive a transition data link user's guide, which will be used later when we go to install the transition data link. Now it's time to see the, the 9402 model 236. The cover just simply slips off. There is packing material in the cover. Sometimes it stays on the unit, sometimes it stays in the box. This time it came off with the box. The system is shipped in a plastic cover. You want to remove that cover and set it aside. There will be taped on the top of your system a document that contains your system password, the, your serial number of your system, the model and type of your system, and uh, the feature code of your system. Also packaged in this box is a power cord that is used to power your 9402 model 236. We'll set that aside. Also in this box is a ramp that you will be using to slide your system unit off the packing crate. This thing, this ramp, simply folds down to form this lip. You will then slide this lip after removing this packing material into this crate underneath this first piece of cardboard so it hooks in place firmly. Then you take this packing material, slip it under the ramp to give it some support. Then you simply take your system unit, push it off the ramp, off the packing material rather, onto the ramp, down the ramp until it hits the floor. Then simply grab underneath the unit, pick it up slightly, and it'll slide right off the unit. Now you've got your 9402 model 236 off the packing material and now you can move it to wherever you want to install it. Now that you have your 9402 model 236 unpacked, you're now ready to install uh, the various accessories onto the uh, system unit. Uh, we have set the system unit in the place we want it to be. For demonstration purposes, we've swung it around so you're looking at the back end of the box. On the back, there are some things we want to point out. The very top here is, is the workstation I.O. adapter, commonly called the workstation controller. Going down from that is a unit called the multifunctional I.O. processor. In that multifunctional I.O. processor, you can put cards. In this particular unit, there's a communications card. This one is a two-line communications card. You can also buy the machine with a, a single-line communications card. Below that is the workstate or the diskette uh, adapter card. The diskette adapter card is always in the bottom of the multifunctional I.O. adapter. Going over to the left, there is slots for uh, larger cards. In this particular unit, there is no other uh, I.O. cards that go in it, so we put in a filler card just to allow air to circulate around the processor. But you could put a token ring card in here, uh, a, another card that could hold 
three communication cards to get you up to your eight lines that are supported on the 36, or you could put in a, uh, a tape processor card to drive the uh, half-inch reel-to-reel tape drive. Uh, the first thing we want to do after we've got the box set up is attach this eight-port uh, workstation adapter feature onto the system, and that goes into the workstation controller. We just simply line the, the connector up to the D-shell, slip it in place, tighten the two screws that are provided, just snug them up, they don't have to be real tight. So now that's in place. Then we want to take a twin X cable that is connected to the back of the system console and attach that to port zero of this eight port uh, workstation adapter uh, feature. These, these ports are numbered 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We want to attach the system console to port 0. So we line up the cable, slip it in place, and just tighten it in. Again, hand tight is good enough. And we can set that aside. Now the next thing you want to attach, if you do have one, is the diskette cable. Your system is shipped with a diskette cable, and you can buy either the five and a quarter inch external diskette, the eight inch external diskette. This one also comes in a five and a quarter inch. But if you were to attach the diskette card or the diskette to the card, you would first plug this cable into the adapter card in the back of the processor. It would go into here, and again, just simply tighten the, the little screws hand tight, not very tight, and then attach the back of this to the back of the diskette drive right in here. For this demonstration, we aren't going to install the diskette drive, but if we were to, then you would take the power supply, which we talked about earlier, plug it into the back of the the uh, diskette drive, plug a power cord into the power supply to a power outlet. The 8 inch has its own internal power supply, so you don't need this power supply. It's built into the box. You would simply attach the power cable to the back of the diskette drive, attach the cable to it, and, and that's installed. The, the system also comes with communications installed. You can buy a single communications card or a, a single line communications card or a double line or two line communications card. This particular system has a two line communications card. We take this two port communications cable, which we talked about earlier, and simply attach it in to the processor unit into this cable or into this card that is the uh, communications adapter card. Seat it in place, tighten the thumb screws. Just snug, they don't have to be real tight. Then if your system came with a single card uh, or a single line communications card, you will simply take this cable, plug it into the single line uh, communications adapter card. But because this system has a two line adapter card, we take one end of this cable and plug it into this two port adapter feature. Again, seated in place. Tighten the screws down just so they're hand tight. Also in the accessory box are some devices called loopbacks. These are things that you plug into the back, into the end of your communications line to complete 
the loop of the communications line that are used for testing. If you do not have a modem, these have to be plugged into the end of your communications line. Uh, but if you do have a modem, you can simply replace these with a modem. For demonstration purposes here, we do not have a modem, so we will attach these. There's a large one that could go into the back of the two-line two adapter card, but because we've attached the two-port uh, communications cable, we don't need that one, so we'll set it aside. But we do have the other two, because this is a two-line communications adapter card, we have to place these at the end of each of the lines. One of these will simply go into the two-port communications adapter. The other one will go into the end of the cable that we attach to the two-port adapter. They just simply slip in place, and now the, the communications loop is completed. The last thing we want to do of attaching things to the back of the computer is put in the power cord. The power cord goes down in the lower right hand corner. It simply plugs in and so that's attached. The very last thing we want to do, we've got everything attached to the computer, is insert the back cover. On the back cover there are two little square holes that go into two little, two little pegs at the bottom of the cover. We slip them on and then simply pop the cover in place. Now we can spin the processor unit around to get to the front of the unit. And there are some things we want to point out here. On the front of the control of the system unit, there is a cover that covers the control panel. Simply pop that cover open, which displays the system control panel. On the upper left-hand corner of the control panel, there's a power button. That button uh, is on when there is power activated to the system unit. There is a white button. That is the power button that you press that button once to IPL the system. There is a system attention light. The system attention light is used to indicate that the system requires attention. Either it is detected in air and an SRC code is going to be displayed, system reference code, be displayed in the uh, functional display panel. There is also a processor light. The processor light is used, is on when the processor is active. When the processor is not active, the light is off. In normal operation, this processor light will flicker, indicating the processor is being used and it's not being used. Below that is the functional display. There are room for eight digits to be displayed. These can be alphanumeric digits. Below that is two select buttons. These select buttons are used to change the digits in the functional display. You can push the up button to cause the digits to rise in sequence or the down button to cause the digits to drop in sequence. There's also an enter button that as you have something in the functional display, you press the enter key, the, the uh, digits shown on the display are stored in the, in the control unit. Now to IPL this system, uh, we need to plug the power cable into a power source. And as you notice, the functional display unit lights up and it shows some digits there. To IPL, we want these digits to be 01 Baker 01 BM. And as we notice, the, 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 the digits are 01 BM, so we don't have to modify them. But if they were something other than 01 BM in the uh, 9402 model 236 install guide, there is a section that displays or that talks about how to modify or alter these uh, uh, digits in the functional display. So if you need to do that, just refer to that install guide. Now that we've got power to the unit, oh, one other thing I should point out is the quarter-inch tape drive. This is the quarter-inch tape drive. You simply slip the cartridge into the quarter-inch drive, close the door, but because this system 
the software in this system was preloaded at the factory, there is no need for us to install any software during the install process. So we can simply close the door and leave it closed. Now that we've got power to the unit, all we have to do is push the power button once and the system will start the IPL process. As you notice, the power light came on and digits started to be displayed in the uh, functional display panel. These digits are the different points at which the IPL is, is uh, being done. Five to ten minutes after we press the power button on the system unit, that was the white button, this screen will appear at the system console. It's the IPL or install the system screen. There are four, op or four options on this screen. The first option, perform an IPL. The second option, install the operating system. The third option, use dedicated service tools. And the fourth option, which is number five, save license internal code. Because the system was preloaded with software back at the factory, there's no need to install the operating system. So we don't have to select that option. Use dedicated service tools is something that you would use to uh, service the box, install PTFs, take dumps, and so on and so forth. We don't need to do that at this time. Save licensed internal code is an option that where you would, after we've installed the system, got it up, we will come back and save the licensed internal code later. At this time, we want to simply perform an IPL. So we take, press the one option or select option one and press the enter key. The system will now IPL up to the 36 sign-on screen. This, after a few seconds, this screen will disappear and another screen will appear that will say IPL step such and such. And this screen will revolve through various steps of the IPL. Finally, the IP 36 IPL or 36 IPL sign-on screen will appear on the system console. On this screen now, you would enter a user ID, but you don't need a password because the system is shipped without security being activated. So we will simply enter a user ID, move the cursor down to the date and time. If the date is not correct, you will key in the correct date. If the time is not correct, you key in the correct time. In this case, the time is correct and the date is correct, so we can simply hit the enter key and the The, the, the IPL process of the 36 will now continue through the file rebuild, uh, folder rebuild, uh, condense, and eventually the 36 command entry screen. There are three ways to turn off your system or power off your system. These three ways are documented in the operating or computer manual. The first way is normal sequence from the system console. The second way is normal sequence from the control panel. The third way is emergency or quick, quick sequence from the control panel. The normal sequence does a delay power down. In other words, it ensures that the system is in a mode that it can be normally be stopped. That is, nobody running, none of the spool writers are running, and so on and so forth it will then power off the system. The emergency or quick sequence is one where you would select where you want to power the system off immediately. It does not do a delayed power down. The minute you hit the power button, the system goes down. We will demonstrate the second of these three ways of powering your system off. That is the normal sequence from the system control panel. The normal sequence from the control panel is simply press the white button once. You'll notice that a zero question mark appeared in the function display panel. This is a warning to say if, are you sure you know what you're doing? Because the next time you hit the white button, the system will power off. If you do not want to power off, simply hit one of the select buttons to move the function display back to a zero one position. I will now press the button, the white the power button for a second time and the system will power off. Now that we've got the uh, 
AS400 Advanced 36 installed, IPL'd, and ready to uh, run. We want to prepare the 36 to do the transition of data from the System 36 to the Advanced 36. And when we unpacked this, we found two diskette in the two diskettes in the uh, accessory box, one five and a quarter and one eight inch. You will use the diskette that fits your system, whether you have a five and a quarter inch drive or an eight inch drive. In this particular system, we have a five and a quarter inch drive. So I've taken the five and a quarter inch diskette, inserted it into the drive, and now I want to install the uh, transition aid on the 36. You need to key in two liber, two library in a file called TN into pound library. Press the enter key. This will two liber some procedures into pound library that we will use to install the transition aid. Now that these procedures have been two libraried into Pound Library, we won't, won't want to run a procedure called TNA load, which will actually take the transition aid uh, programs off the diskette and store them in its own library. Key it in, press the enter key. Now that we've installed the transition aid on the 36, there are some other things we can do to the 36 in preparation for transitioning the data from the 36 over to the advanced 36. Uh, the transition aid requires that both systems, the 30, system 36 and the advanced 36, run in dedicated mode. So one thing you can do is go around and have all your users sign off the 36 you want to go ahead and use the delete procedure to remove all files, libraries, and folders that you do, no, do not want to transition over to the advanced 36. If there are jobs running on the job queue, you want to allow those jobs to complete before you do your transition. If you have spool files on your system 36 that you want to bring over to your advanced 36, you will have to copy them to a data file because spool files are not transitioned over to the advanced 36. So what you want to do is use the copy print pr procedure to copy those spool files you want to transition over to a data file. Now that you've done all this, the 36 is now ready to be transitioned over to the advanced 36. Now that we've installed the transition aid on the 36, we're now going to install the transition data link to both systems. This is the little box it'll take and, and transition your data from your system 36 to the advanced 36. The, the data link comes pre-configured with uh, two ports with all seven addresses set to be to emulate a 5292 model 2, that's device code 22 as far as the 36 goes, so that when you, you need a free port on your 36 and you need a free port on your advanced 36. And then you will cable in the, the transition aid. When we IPL auto config, we'll configure all seven of those addresses to be uh, a 5292 model 2 on both systems. Uh, you can also explicitly configure in the data link, and this is documented in the Transition Data Link User's Guide. For this demonstration, we're not going to do that. We we're going to use all seven addresses that are pre-configured when the data link is shipped. To install the Transition Data Link, we first start by attaching the three-port workstation adapter feature to the Transition data link box. We simply slip the pin connector into the front of the transition data link and hand tighten the screws. Then we take a twin X cable that we have previously attached to the system 36 and we have to have a free port on both the 36 
System 36, and the Advanced 36. That's because all seven addresses are going to be used uh, during this uh, IPL of the transition data link. So we'll take this twin X cable that's attached to the 36 and attach it to port zero of the three port twin X adapter feature. The next thing is to take the other twin X cable and attach it to port one of the twin X or three port twin X uh, TDL attachment. Take the other end of that cable and you can attach it to any one of the seven free ports that is on the eight port uh, attachment feature. But we're going to pick port three for this demonstration. Now we should have everything uh, connected properly. We've connected one twin X cable to the 36, attached it to the three port uh, twin X uh, adapter. We've taken another twin X cable, attached it to the eight port attachment feature that is attached to the advanced 36 and attached it to port one of the twin X, the three port twin X uh, attachment feature. The next thing is to take the power cord and plug it into the back of the TDL. The lights on the front of the TDL will come on in sequence, go off and come back on. Port zero or the zero light should stay off because the 36 will not recognize the TDL unless it's been IPL'd. We will have to also IPL the advanced 36 so the 36 running in the Advanced 36 will recognize it. Now that both systems have been IPL, you notice that the TDL is recognizing and has established communications with both systems. All five lights are lit. The next thing we want to do is go in and determine which workstation ID we want to use to transition data between the System 36 and the Advanced 36. To do that, we'll use Config SSP. So we'll key in config SSP at the system console. And press enter. Now that the conf config SSP main menu has been displayed, we want to go into review mode. So we take option three and press the enter key. We want to review the master configuration record. The default is five, which is the master. We simply press enter. This is just a member description screen. There's nothing here of, we need, so we simply press enter. We want to go out and look at the display stations and work sta display stations and printers. So we select option one, press the enter key. We want to go and add or delete local display stations and printers. Ignore the add or delete. We're in review mode, so we're going to review display stations and printers. Select option one, press enter. And as you notice, we attached the TDL to port two of the advanced 36. And as I said earlier, it will configure in as a 5292 model two, which is device code 22. It has placed 22s on all seven addresses on port two. We now pick one of those addresses to be the address we're going to use to transition over. And for this demonstration, we'll pick address one. So now we've selected address one. We hit command key three here to go back. And we, we want to go in and change display station IDs or printer workstation IDs. So we select option six. Remember, this is in review mode again. So we're going to review it, not change it. We select option six. Now we want to go in and, and pick which workstation ID was on port two, address one. It initially comes up with port zero, so we simply hit the enter key. Now we're on port two. We go over to address one, and we see that it's 
workstation ID W4. We, we want to write that down and use it later in the, the TDL process. We, we want to do the same things on the system 36, that is go into config SSP, go into review mode, go in and on that system we have the TDL attached to port 1, so in that case we would look at port 1, address 1, and jot down the workstation ID that showed up there. We can simply hit command 3 to get out of this and get back to a command entry screen. We have now installed the TDL. We have IPL both systems, so auto config has occurred on both the System 36 and the Advance 36. We now know the workstation ID of the 36 and the workstation ID of the Advanced 36 that are to be used during this TDL process. So now we want to start the transition of data from the System 36 to the Advanced 36. To do that, we'll key in the procedure name TN export and press the enter key. As you see, the save options screen has appeared. We can now select to do the save to diskette, to tape, or to the data link. In this demonstration, we're going to use the data link, so we key in option three and press the enter key. It now comes up with the save to data link screen and it prompts us for the data link workstation ID that we determined earlier. In this case on the 36 it was W3 so we key in W3 and press the enter key. It comes up now with the confirmed data link ready screen. The words say to save the data link to save via the data link can begin if the target system is in data link receive mode. This is accomplished on the target system by using the TN import command and selecting the data link on the restore options display. When the target system has been placed in data link receive mode, press enter and begin the save. The confirmed data link ready screen on the system 36 informed us to go over onto the other system, the advanced 36, and key in the TN import command. I'll do that now. Press the enter key. The restore option screen is then presented to us. We can then here select to restore from diskette, tape, or the data link. Because we're saving on the 36th of the data link, we want to select to restore from the data link, so we select option three. We then can select to either replace an item if it already exists or not replace an item if it already exists. I think we should select to replace an item already exists, so we select option one or yes to replace the item, press the enter key. It now comes up to restore from data link display. Here we will key in the workstation ID that we determined earlier using config SSP, which was W4, and press the enter key. It'll now put the system in dedicated mode. It'll vary off all the workstations that are attached, and then come up with a message saying the data link is now in receive mode. So now we can go back to the system 36 and press the enter key. We are now back at the System 36 console where we can hit the Enter key to start the transition. But before I do that, after I hit the Enter key, you will see messages start to roll up from the bottom of the screen on the System 36 system console. And at the same time, messages will start to roll up on the system console on the advanced 36. The 36 screen will say, Library XYZ is being saved. A few seconds later, a message will appear on the system 30, on the advanced 36 console that'll say library XYZ being processed. And this will continue alternately until all the items from the 36 have been transitioned 
over to the advanced 36. I will now hit the enter key on the system 36. The 36 is being placed into dedicated mode just like the advanced 36 by varying off all workstations that are currently active. It will then go ahead and create a list of items that it's going to transition over from the 36 to the advanced 36. The transition aid of or the transition of data from the system 36 to the advanced 36 is now completed. Uh, the transition aid uh, completion screen is is presented at the system 36 council and at the advanced 36 council. To exit, we simply hit the enter key, and the command entry screen is redisplayed. We are now at the system console of the advanced 36. We'll hit the enter key, but as the screen says, we want to check the transition aid items not restored list for items which have failed to restore. I'll now hit the enter key. Then we'll do a work spool to display spool files. And the very bottom screen has got a work spool file that was created by T or a spool file created by TN import. We'll go browse that. And it said a total of total items to be restored were 39 items restored successfully were 39 items not restored zero. So we complete we successfully saved 39 items from the 36 and restored 39 items to the advanced 36. We can simply hit command 7 here to exit. And we're back to the uh, system 36 command entry screen on the advanced 36. We have now successfully installed the advanced 36 transition data over from the system 36 to the advanced 36. Now there are a few things that we should talk about that should occur after we've installed and transitioned this data over to the advanced 36. The first thing is the master configuration record from the 36. This master configuration record was transitioned over, stored in a library file named $TNMCNFG. It, the, the member within that library file was also named $TNMCNFG. This is the master configuration record from the 36. What you should do with it is to library this member into pound config lib on this advanced 36. Then go in and apply that member, that configuration member, to the master configuration record on your advanced 36. When you do that, only pick the option to modify the displays and printers, that is your local workstations and local printers. This way, when it's time, you can simply take the cables off the system 36 and attach those cables to the same port and address on your advanced 36. One thing to remember, though, is the system 36 had either a two-port workstation controller, a four-port workstation controller, or a six-port workstation controller. The advanced 36 has an eight port workstation controller. So there may have to be some individual mapping of 
workstations and printers as you bring them over to your Advanced 36. The other thing we should talk about is backing up your system. Your system probably came preloaded and you did not get a backup or a distribution tape from ISMC or uh, distribution center. So you sh have to make your own backup in case the system would ever fail. There is instructions in the operating your computer manual to back up the licensed internal code, back up the SSP, and as well as back up all the programs, licensed programs you ordered. The last thing we should talk about is verifying your configuration. Go in with config SSP and verify the configuration on your 36. Then after applying the transitioned over configuration member, verify that, that the configuration member or master configuration member on your advanced 36 matches your system 36. Once that is done, then you can start moving cables from one system over to the other system. What we have done here so far is demoed installing the advanced 36 and transitioning your data over from the system 36 to the advanced 36. If, if there are still questions after viewing this video, please refer to the manuals. The four or five manuals you should be looking at is for the transition data link is a transition data link user's guide for installation of your advanced 36 or 9402 model 236 is the 9402 model 236 install guide. For questions about IPL, saving your system, you should refer to the, the operator operating your computer manual 9402 model 236. For questions about configuration, performing your first configuration, applying a configuration member to the master configuration record, refer to performing your first configuration on your 9402 Model 236.